I was just talking recently about how I really think capture cards need to innovate better when it comes to affordability. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, pops up this mysterious USB 2.0 capture card that everyone starts pinging me from different places to buy. eBay, Amazon, multiple Amazon addresses actually, AliExpress, that is under $100. And in some case, it's only $15 or $20 or $30 or $50. Someone recommended this to me in the comments and I picked it up based on that listing. I paid $50 for it. You can get it for 30 on Amazon, 18 or so on eBay and like 15 or 20 on AliExpress. So what does the cheapest capture card money can buy actually get you? Well, it turns out in some ways this beats out expensive capture cards. Today's capture card review is really confusing. I don't really know what to think about it. I This goes against most of my rules of capture cards and I, I, I don't even know. So this is my review of what I'm calling the can't link instead of the cam link. and say. 16 to $50 cam link competitor that is pretty cool, but also what? Today's capture card doesn't have a brand name. I can't tell you the company that makes it. It's available on Amazon from Blue AVS as well as Goodan, Goodan, and then it's on eBay and AliExpress with no brand name whatsoever. It's just the HDMI video capture and they're using the fancy HDMI logo, even though they probably didn't actually pay to license that or anything such like that. Uh, this is a USB 2.0 HDMI capture card that is made in the style of the Cam Link. It even comes with a short USB extension cable, much like the Cam Link. And yeah, USB 2.0. But at the same time, the latency is just as low, if not lower than USB 3.0 capture cards. My mind is entirely blown by this little device. Again, I picked it up. I'll have multiple links to it in the description below. As it seems every time I post a capture card review, it goes out of stock and options are better than getting the cheapest version of it. But this is a super tiny little capture card that's designed to be an alternative to the Agato's Cam Link or any other UVC capture card. It's UVC, it comes in this nice little shroud. It's gonna struggle to fit in your USB ports. You'll wanna use this extension cable. It supports up to 1080p 60 input, no 4K support, anything like that, no 4K 30 support either. And then you can capture either 720p 60 or 1080p 30. And so pretty weird there. Uh, it's, those specs are fairly limiting. I would love to see higher specs, obviously for the price, whatever. Um, but this makes it the most affordable Cam Link alternative you could possibly buy. It doesn't make any sense. I even hooked it up to my main cameras had no problem using it as an actual camera capture card. Shows up in Skype, Discord, Zoom, whatever, just fine. The latency is pretty low, so it works great for a camera. You do have to set your camera manually to 1080p mode. If you leave it on 4K mode, it'll be like, no, sorry, can't help you. Works pretty nice there. It does only support MJPEG uh, color encoding. No YUI2 unless you drop down to 480p uh, 30 FPS or 480p. I think even 60 FPS is YUI2, but anything 720p is 60 FPS in MJPEG, 1080p is 30 FPS MJPEG as well. But you do need to use the partial color range instead of full in OBS. Where this card gets really weird and interesting comes down to the latency. This thing ties for second place in terms of the fastest capture card I've ever reviewed, tying with the Magewell Loop Through 4K PCIe capture card with first place being, of course, the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K. This thing has an average of 48 milliseconds of latency to the OBS preview, and to more of a raw access of the video feed could have even lower of a preview latency, as far down as 35 or so milliseconds. Which is just bonkers. I don't understand this. I have always said the past few years to not buy any USB 2.0 capture card, mainly because most of them, if they're USB 2.0 releasing in 2020, then they're just doing onboard compression and that made most of them, the Live Gamer Mini, the older Elgatos and so on, have really high latency. This one operates kind of how the past two capture cards I've reviewed, which have USB 2.0 backwards compatibility. It basically operates in that way. And so it is extremely low latency. Like for that value, it's insane. In fact, it is so low latency that I decided to hook it up, even though it doesn't have pass through. If you use it with a game console, you will want an HDMI splitter because even with how low latency it is, playing from the preview isn't great, but I wanted to see what it was like. So I hooked it up, full screened my OBS preview, tried to play some Halo 3 on Master Chief Collection. Now it turns out, you know, I'm good enough at Halo 3 that I was able to compensate and still carry my team almost to a win.
But in doing so, I certainly looked like I was playing drunk or something, because that kind of latency just really throws off your aim in a reaction-based shooter, platformer, things like that. Wasn't pretty. Here's what gameplay looked like in 30 FPS 1080p capture as well. Now, at 720p 60, you're getting full fluid frame rate. It's fine for streaming to Twitch or something like that when you're streaming probably in 720p anyway. But when you're used to, as someone who's used to the higher end capture cards and things like that, the 720p image compared to native 1080p, 4K, anything like that, feels pretty soft. Now there's no washed outness, the colors look pretty great, it's just a very low resolution for 2020. But, and when you can pay in some cases under $20, you probably don't care. <laughs> if you're just using it for meetings or video calls, you probably don't care. Now when I was trying to play off the preview at 720p 60, I kept feeling what felt like significant frame drops. I think those were amplified through playing through the full screen preview and combined with the already existing input latency, I think just kind of made it feel worse. Uh, as when I ran it through the frame rate analyzer, according to my, my frame rate analyzer, which isn't gonna be 100% accurate, I wasn't maintaining full 60 FPS, but it's close enough that it probably was 60 FPS. And like I said, any potential drops were just amplified by the existing input latency of playing. 48 milliseconds doesn't sound like a lot and it's great for audio syncing. It makes things a lot easier, but for actually playing off of can be pretty rough. So I had originally completely ruled this out as a possibility, but it turns out <laughs> this capture card also works with the open source scan converter. We're talking Super Nintendo, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X, all ready to go without any issues. Changes between them super fast. I'm so confused. It even worked with the output from my smartphone, my gaming phone. Downscaled it properly, everything. I I swear this capture card is magic. I'm so confused. Now, as I mentioned, these capture cards popped up out of nowhere, seemingly overnight, and a lot of people started looking into them. One, including the person by the handle Arsenio Dev, who actually started taking it apart and looking at it from a hardware perspective and found that it has a macro silicon ASIC on it. Uh, that isn't listed on their site. We still don't know who's actually making the card itself, but also found that it is, you know, up to normal UVC spec. It supports all of the normal UVC formats and it seems to be reporting everything properly. And he's the one who came up with the cant link naming, which I just absolutely love. You got the cam link and the alternative, the cant link. It does actually support HDCP handshake too. It can't force any extra frame rates or anything to it. Of course, again, 1080p 30 is your cap, but that's fine for what this is. They also just picked up, there's a very similar looking USB 3.0 model from this, which is not any more expensive. Uh, they're looking into this, it's out of stock, so I can't get my hands on it just yet, but I will try when I can, because it's similarly priced. But overall, I don't really have anything else to say about this capture card. It breaks my mind in terms of everything that I say about a capture card. It is a less than $50, depending on where you're buying it, USB 2.0 capture card that in 2020 I'm saying is probably what you should go for. It is the cheapest capture card you can get your hands on. It provides good quality. It provides absurdly low latency and is a wonderful alternative to the Elgato Cam Link. So much so that I think most people looking into Cam Links, especially given how expensive they are on the used market right now, most of you have no reason to go past this. So if you're looking for an option for a face cam, for video conferencing or live streaming or meetings or whatever, or you're looking for something for hooking up like a microscope camera, or you're just looking to stream some gameplay and you also want to buy an HDMI splitter, or you just want to pick up some screen capture of a Raspberry Pi or an older computer. This is a phenomenal option as long as they remain on the market. This is one of those where they're kind of remanufactured and resold under a bunch of different brand names. They're gonna sell out once they run out of the press, you know, they print, not I say press, like they're printing something, but you know, they make so many of these off of the same factory line, they sell out and then once they're gone, they're usually just gone forever. But while they're still available for the bargain that they are, this is phenomenal and I would recommend it. I, I, I'm coming up with weird, I'm struggling to come up with the right words to talk about this because I can't even give a name to it because it has no name. It's a nameless capture card. Ugh. But yeah, 1080p 30, 720p 60. 1080p60 input, MJPEG, 48 milliseconds of latency. It's all for me. If you enjoy this kind of content, uh, subscribe for more stream guides and tech education. I'm Evil Fox, stream professor. Hit the like button. Go subscribe on Floatplane for early access to videos and behind the scenes content. And I'll see you next time. Product links will be in the description below to both Amazon's, probably AliExpress, and eBay. See ya.